Coup d'etats and political upheavals across Latin America are happening lately, and I feel compelled to talk about this. I am Rodrigo Gim, an anthropologist and social critic, and this is Critique with Nietzsche and Foucault. Today's video is totally influenced by what's happening in Bolivia and Brazil. In Bolivia, there is a coup d'etat led by fu fundamentalist Christian movements that is racist in its discourse and practice. And in Brazil, we have a government that has elected itself on the basis of a discourse of a war against enemies. Their enemies are those they call leftists or communists, and this anti-communist discourse in Brazil also includes racial hatred against indigenous peoples and any social movement for the improvement for peoples, groups, nations, classes, or genders. Today we will remember what Michel Foucault called racism which would be the dominant political form of political discourse and historical discourse linked to the nation-state. But first, let's talk about the nation-state from a post-colonial critique. Nation-states depend on the construction of a history, a single unified history. This unified history, a product of the Enlightenment and its operation of truth discourses, usually glorifies the birth of the nation in the view of colonizers. Colonizers and brutal explorers, murderers and their friends are portrayed as the discoverers of lands that were inhabited for at least 30,000 years prior to their arrival. That's today's estimate for the Americas. In Africa and Asia, it could be argued that humans have existed for millions of years. With colonization and in the making of the nation-state, different and dispersed histories are erased, many times annihilated in the name of history with a single capital H. The story told will depend on the group that aspires to take or hold on to power, and the stories neglected are innumerous. And I will leave in the description here of the video some references to the questioning of the history of nation-states. Mistreatments are thus legitimated through historical nar narratives that tend to recognize no other being than a modern or civilized being. Those that are not modern or civilized are termed backward, savage, barbaric, or less than human. This discourse of the nation-state as a civilization goes hand in hand with a war on those considered savage, barbaric, etc. And this comes to invisibilize the savage and barbaric acts of the nation-state. It is always the other of the modern subject that is savage and barbaric, never the modern subject or the state that acts in its name. The nation-states, through their supposed impartiality, paradoxically open up spaces for the true Brazilian, true Bolivian, true American to exist. These fundamentalisms arise and flourish under the discourses of truth enabled by and foundation of two nation-states. Michel Foucault, in his analysis of the present political culture, claims that politics has come to be seen as war continued by other means. He reverses the famous assertion of the Prussian military general and theorist Clausewitz, who said that, citation, war is politics by other means. Foucault stated, citation, this reversal of Clausewitz's assertion that war is politics continued by other means has a triple significance. In the first place, it implies that the relations of power that function in a society such as ours essentially rest upon a definite relation of forces that is established at a determinate 
historically specifiable moment in war and by war. Furthermore, if it is true that political power puts an end to war, that installs or tries to install the reign of peace in civil society, this by no means implies that it suspends the effects of war or neutralizes the disequilibrium revealed in the final battle. The role of political power on this hypothesis is perpetually to reinscribe this relation through a form of unspoken warfare, to reinscribe it in social institutions, in economic inequalities, in language, in the bodies themselves of each and every one of us. Michel Foucault in the book Power Knowledge. For Foucault, then, the political ethic that has become dominant since the 17th century is one whereby history is a field installed through battle that requires subject positions to be configured as in war. He called this supposed dependence between history and war historicism. It is based on a discourse on biological imperatives that make up historical races. And this is why Foucault interprets the functioning of historicism as racism. This is because it depends upon the raising of arms against an enemy, a biologically or naturally locatable enemy. What happened in the 19th century is that another discourse, inverting and at the same time completing the previous one, comes to the fore. It also works through the war logic, only now with more subtlety. It locates war in the present, instead of ascribing it to an original battle. The dominant discourse on left and right partakes of this. The enemy in socialist discourse, for example, has been named capitalist, tyrant, or otherwise, and these were, of course, named in order to be fought against, to be dealt with from inside the malfunctioning living unit that is society. This discourse is part of what Foucault termed biopower, because its legitimacy depends on the assumption of natural roots to politics, located in the biological construction named population. It is politics functioning through the power technology of war by a form of racism. For Foucault, the modern state is always ready to use racism against its own population. If, on the one hand, a discourse of race can be used to favor part of the more disenfranchised population, like it happened over the last few years in Bolivia, for example. On the other hand, the state can be turned against these same parts of the population that were more or less favored, at least in the eyes of other parts of the same population. Says Foucault, citation, Racism is tied to the function of a state that is compelled to use race, the elimination of races, and the purification of the race to exercise its sovereign power. It is a racism that a society will practice against itself, against its own elements, against its own products. It is an internal racism that of a constant purification, which will be one of the fundamental dimensions of social normalization. Foucault in the book Society Must Be Defended. The enemy of society in this discourse of racism is built within society. In the book Society Must Be Defended, Foucault makes a genealogy of the concept of the war of races and shows how it is both a modification and a continuation of war as a model of understanding history and also a normalizing process in society, where others who don't fit the same dominant way of life, remain to be normalized or annihilated or expelled from a society. The quest for normalization is constant in the biopolitical nation-state, where differences need to be normalized, that is, they need to be devoid of their possible radicalities of, or what cannot be co-opted by the state 
the market or institutions. At the same time, much of what is proposed as a revolution draws from the same source in this genealogy, because many revolutionary discourses are for the annihilation of enemies as the ultimate solution for society. But today, this discourse is dominantly for unification. Biopolitics, as far as Foucault studied it in our present, led to a, to a unifying discourse of race. The prevailing discourse today is that there would be only one people, one unified people who should have the attention of the state. And those who are not part of this unified people in this biopolitical order are because they were never part, that is one discourse, or they need to be normalized, that is, they need to become the same as the rest of the population, or else they must be annihilated, extermined, or exiled from society. The other of the dominant society, of course, in the case of Brazil and Bolivia, is the indigenous par excellence. The great other of the biopolitical nation-state has always been the indigenous in the Americas, as the indigenous obviously rightly refused to be part of the biopolitical order. They refused to be normalized as Brazilian citizens, as they would always be second-class citizens in this order. The indigenous nations declare themselves nations. That's why in Bolivia they created a plurinational state, which is now under attack. The biopolitical order requires that all recognize themselves as part of the same nation, even those who are kept as second class or third class in this order, and who suffer the most diverse forms of violence, including the genocide of peoples. The biopolitical order, which wants to extermine the different others, both in Bolivia and Brazil, is a racist and Christian fundamentalist order, which in addition to wanting to exterminate in their societies what they call communists, putting everything in the same bundle. Uh, they also have the indigenous peoples as their greatest enemy, because indigenous peoples demand something that the biopolitical order cannot provide, the possibility of autonomous and radically different ways of living. We are reliving colonial processes and the struggle for the livelihoods of indigenous nations of Latin America is a struggle for all those who refuse to be normalized, who reject the sameness of this order that hovers over all of Latin America. Since once sameness is in place, it's easier for the settlers, the colonialists, the businessmen, the financiers, the mining and oil companies to profit because today the resistance to environmental devastation and at the same time to the normalization of cultures and populations in Latin America is indigenous. This video is not meant to fully explain what's happening and it's not to indicate the solution. Explaining something totally is absurd. It should always sound as absurd to us. What I wanted to do here is just a little intervention. If this indicates any solution for Bolivia or Brazil, it's that solutions must involve the autonomy of peoples over their cultures, bodies, territories and lives, which have long been violated. I leave you here with some videos and pictures that represent the violence that the states of Bolivia and Brazil represent today for these peoples, and on the side for all who live under these racist sta states. And I will leave you some references uh, in the description of the video. See you next Thursday. Se eu assumir, não tem um centímetro quadrado mais para a terra indígena. Ok? Essa é a minha resposta. Mari, estás viendo? La presidenta está llegando al antiguo palacio presidencial con.
una, una Biblia al parecer es en la que se va a juramentar en el recinto antiguo. Dice que... Ha permitido que la Biblia vuelva a entrar a Palacio. Que nos bendiga. ¡Gloria a Dios! ¡Gloria a Dios! ¡Gloria a Dios! ¡La Biblia vuelva a Palacio! Está reconociendo los movimientos cívicos y sociales y a la ciudadanía por haber pensado solo en Bolivia. Esto es por Bolivia. Los hermanos indígenas también nos acompañan. Los hermanos campesinos también nos acompañan. Las iglesias nos acompañan. Porque esto es lo que quiere Bolivia. Vivir en paz. Vivir en democracia, vivir en libertad. Nosotros apostamos por ello y nos arriesgamos a ello. Y sí se puede.